So now we're going to look at stereo isomers and we're going to start with our geometric isomers. Geometric isomers are isomers that have a different arrangement around a pi bond or around a ring. These are known as cis trans isomers. Now remember that single bonds can rotate, but double bonds cannot. Ring structures also tend to be are more rigid than a standard sigma bond. So if we have a disubstituted double bond here, and here we have our hydrogen, and here we have chlorine, and we have our atoms arranged in a way that they are opposite one another. So if you, if you look at hydrogen, because sometimes students get confused about what we're having across and what we're having adjacent. So if you look at the hydrogens being across from one another, that's called a trans isomer. Trans is a cross. Or we can have the hydrogens on the same side. That's called a cis isomer. So although both of these compounds are called 1,2-dichloroethene, this one is trans, and it would be named trans 1,2-dichloroethene. This one is cis and would be named as appropriately, cis-1,2-dichloroethene. Now you can have trans and cis around a ring structure as well. And those structures would be shown as the same side of the ring. So here we have two wedges coming out towards us, indicating same side of the ring. Or we could have trans, indicating one on the top, and one on the bottom. So we're looking at the different planar structures of the ring. Again, they would be named cis and trans, and then you go through the naming conventions we went over in module two. We have our ring structure that is our longest carbon chain, so this would be cyclohexane. We then need to name and number our substituents. We'll start at one of the substituents and end at the other because it really doesn't matter which way we go here. One, two, three, this way. We still have a one and a three. So this would be one, three, dimethyl cyclohexane. But then because we can have two stereoisomers, the cis and the trans, now we need to add this stereo indicator telling us where they are in relation to one another, cis or trans. Now we're going to look at asymmetric isomers. Now asymmetric isomers are where students get confused the most. So take this part slowly. These isomers are going to have an sp3 hybridized carbon and that sp3 hybridized carbon will have four different groups around it. That's going to be crucial. You need an sp3 hybridized carbon with four different groups. Now you can have asymmetric centers, and that's what these, these places, these sp3 hybridized carbons will, with four groups are called. They're called asymmetric centers. They can also be called chiral centers. They're interchangeable words. Now a stereocenter could also be that pi bond. So be careful with the semantics. An asymmetric center is a chiral center. Um, it's also a stereocenter, but not all stereocenters are asymmetric. So we're going to go with a, a, these sp3 hybridized carbons that have four different atoms or groups around it. Now something to keep in mind as you move forward, but not for our class, nitrogen and phosphorus can also be asymmetric centers, but not for us. So if that's something that's going to apply to you later, keep that in mind, write it down somewhere. Now typically when we have an asymmetric center, we will have two raised to the n stereoisomers. Now, not always, because we'll talk about meso compounds, but it's a general rule of thumb. You should be looking for that many stereoisomers. We're looking for sp3 hybridized carbons, so I'm going to start by crossing out the sp2 hybridized carbons. All of these carbonyls are sp2 hybridized. So they will not be stereocenters for us. Now let's take a look at these sp3 hybridized carbons. If I'm going to look at this one here, I show two bonds. So what are the other things that are bonded? Well, they are two hydrogens. 
Remember Dalton's atomic theory from general chemistry that all atoms of the same element will have the same properties. So these are the same hydrogens as far as we're concerned right now. Therefore, this cannot be an asymmetric center. This car, different items bonded to it. I'm gonna erase this X for now because this methylene group also not a, uh, an asymmetric center. So we're gonna focus on the one that I've circled. So this carbon, we have an OH, we have a methyl group. And then what else do we have? Well, we have a CCOO and we have methylene, methylene OH. So you see those are four different groups. This is an asymmetric center. Moving on to serine, we have this group here, and this is also an asymmetric center. We have an sp3 hybridized carbon, and that, hybrid, that carbon has an amine group, a methyl group, a methoxy group, and it has a carbonyl, a carboxylate group. But what's the fourth bond? Well, the fourth bond is an implied hydrogen. So there are my four groups. That is an asymmetric center. This carbon here is not an asymmetric center because it has two hydrogens. So let's look at this one. Here we have a carbon that has an OH. It has a methyl group. Remember, there's a carbon at every end and bend. We have the rest of the molecule down here. And then what's the fourth group? Remember there's at the fourth group, wherever you don't see a bond shown, it's going to be a hydrogen. That is an asymmetric center. We have our four different groups. This is also an asymmetric center. So this carbon has its amine group. We have the rest of the molecule up here, and we have our carbonyl or our carboxylate. Again, that fourth group is the implied hydrogen. So there are four groups around that sp3 hybridized carbon. So you see some compounds can have more than one asymmetric center. This carbon has a carbonyl and a nitrogen. And I'm just gonna just abbreviate briefly so that you can see what the different groups are. And then moving down, we have a carbon with a carbonyl, nitrogen, etc. So what are these groups? Remember, if you don't see a bond there, they are hydrogens. Because there are two hydrogens here, that is not an asymmetric center. So we're looking for sp3, but with four different groups. So all that I have left is this one here. So I'm showing three bonds. So there's one group. I have my carboxylate group. I have my nitrogen group. And then I have the implied hydrogen. So you see, there are my four groups. That is an asymmetric center. Here in biotin, I have this group and this group. They are asymmetric centers. These are not, well that is not, this is an asymmetric center. This is not because it has two hydrogens. Any methylene group that has two hydrogens is not an asymmetric center. Moving on, we have this group here. It has two bonds showing. That means it has two hydrogens. That is not an asymmetric center. This is an asymmetric center. This also is an asymmetric center, and this is not. So now let's look. If we have one asymmetric center, look at the mirror image. Is the mirror image non-superimposable? If so, the relationship between those two compounds is called enantiomeric. They are an enantiomer pair.
that's when you have stereoisomers that have opposite rotation. Now we're going to get to naming and rotation in the next section. But for now, what I would like to show you is what this looks like when you have an enantiomer pair. So here we have an asymmetric carbon. See, it's sp3 hybridized and it has four different groups. I'm just using the different colors in my model kit in order to show those different groups. So now I have made the mirror image. Or as close to the mirror image as I can get, I realize these two colors aren't exactly the same. So here I have the mirror images, but they are not superimposable. No matter which way I turn this molecule, the green and blue atoms won't be the same. Therefore, they are different molecule parts. They are different asymmetric centers. So these are enantiomers. Their mirror images are not superimposable. When you have molecules that are mirror images of one another and they are non-superimposable, they're also called chiral molecules. So you could be asked if given a molecule, let's say you're, this is your molecule, and you could be asked, is this molecule chiral? The only way to know that is to draw the mirror image and see if they are superimposable. If they are not superimposable, it is a chiral molecule. So an enantiomer are, is a pair of stereoisomers where the mirror images are not superimposable. So a chiral pair of molecules are called enantiomers. Chirality is also called handedness. Your hands are chiral, chiral objects. It's a chiral pair. Your left hand and your right hand are essentially mirror images of one another, and, but they cannot be superimposed. An object like an Erlenmeyer flask or a chair or a table can be superimposed on its mirror image. So that would be an achiral object or an achiral molecule. For example, here we have bromochlorofluoromethane. Bromochlorofluoromethane could be like the asymmetric carbon that I just showed you with the model kit. As you rotate it, it cannot be superimposed when you have the, the mirror images. Something like dichlorofluoromethane, see how we have the two chlorines here, that removes the uh, chirality. So now these are achiral compounds, or this is an achiral compound, because as we rotate it, it's the same molecule. So the, when the mirror image is, can be superimposed, it's the same molecule that is not an enantiomer. So now continuing with stereoisomers, what if we have more than one asymmetric center? We can have a special case that are called diastereomers when you have more than one asymmetric center. And that's actually more common than the enantiomer pair. So a diastereomer is going to be a stereoisomer that is not a mirror image of one another. So what, we can, uh, what I can show you is actually with a ring structure. If we have this cyclopentane molecule, and it's, it's monosubstituted, you see the one uh, green atom there, and I make its mirror image. There's its mirror image. Now, if I can rotate the mirror image and impose it upon the molecule, so it's the same molecule, that is called an achiral compound. Those are not enantiomer pairs. Now, if I have a disubstituted compound, here I have the cis disubstituted compound of this cyclopentane and I make its mirror image. I also have an achiral pair because these are the same molecule, so those are not enantiomers. But if I have the trans isomer, here I have a green atom both on top and below the ring, and I make its mirror image. You see the, the greens are mirrored on top, the greens are mirrored on the bottom, the rest of the molecule is the same. 
then I do have an enantiomer pair. Because regardless of how I twist this molecule, I cannot get them the same. I cannot make the greens line up. So this is an enantiomer pair. This 1,2 trans, let's call it chlorine, trans dichlorocyclopentane, I have two different enantiomers. We will name those asymmetric centers as to how to name them differently in the next topic. Now, if one of these compounds was trans and the other was cis, then what I have now are stereoisomers that are not mirror images. So these compounds, the relationship between these compounds, they would be called diastereomers. What we're doing when we're describing isomers is we're describing the relationship between two compounds. Kind of like saying you have cousins, you and this person, you, you are cousins, versus you and this other person, you are siblings. That's how we're describing our isomers. Are they cousins or are they siblings? So the diastereomers, these would be cousins. The enantiomers would be siblings. Meso compounds will have two asymmetric centers, but they will have only three stereoisomers. They will be optically inactive compounds. Now we're gonna do optical activity as well later in this module. Remember that modules with asymmetric centers will generally have 2N stereoisomers unless there is an isomer pair that is meso. So if we go back to our cyclopentane example, we have the trans isomers of our disubstituted cyclopentane, and we've already shown that they are enantiomers. We can't superimpose them and make them the same molecule. But when we have our cis isomer, we can have cis on the top of the plane, or we could have cis on the bottom of the plane, but I can rotate that and make the same molecule. So although there are two asymmetric centers with this molecule, I only have three stereoisomers. That's because the mirror image of the cis isomer is a meso compound. Meso compounds tend to have a mirror plane inside the molecule. So here it traverses this bond and this carbon and they are mirror images of one another. Now meso compounds are optically inactive and again we will get to optical activity in a later topic. So let's determine if compounds are chiral or achiral. What we have here is 2-propanol. Now 2-propanol does have two methyl groups, so this is not an asymmetric center. So if you make 2-propanol, you should see that you should be able to rotate 2-propanol to find its mirror image. Because the mirror image is superimposed, they are the same molecule. It is achiral. So let's, let's look at these. Are they chiral? achiral, enantiomers, or diastereomers. Here we have two isomers of glyceraldehyde. Here are the isomers of glyceraldehyde as they're drawn on the page. You see the molecule on the left has the alcohol group on the second carbon coming out, and the molecule on the right has the alcohol group in the rear. These are my carbonyl groups down here. Now if I turn these models around to make them basically look at each other down the carbonyl, these are mirror images. We can show the mirror images by turning them this way as well. They are mirror images, but they are not superimposable upon one another. Enantiomers, because they are mirror images that are not superimposable. These are chiral isomers, or the glyceraldehyde molecule is a chiral molecule because its mirror image is not superimposable upon itself. Now let's look at lactic acid. Lactic acid is a structural isomer of glyceraldehyde. Make the glyceraldehyde molecule with your model kit and then shift the atoms around to make lactic acid. Now here are the isomers of lactic acid. We have our carbonyl groups here 
and on the carb on the second carbon, the asymmetric carbon, we have our OH group going to the rear on the molecule on the left. And on the molecule on the right, we have our OH group coming out towards us on the asymmetric center. Now, as we look at this molecule, we can't rotate this molecule to get it in the same order. Now, one of the things we can do, we can rotate around our sigma bonds, and that's, that's fine. And as we rotate around our sigma bonds, it looks like it might be forming the same molecule, but it's not because of the position of this methyl group. If we put the OHs to the rear on that asymmetric carbon, but hold the carbonyl groups in the same place, then what you see is instead of the uh, hydrogen going up high, we have our methyl group up high when we put our, our alcohol groups to the rear. So the methyl and the hydrogen, we don't make the same molecule. So these lactic acid molecules, These lactic acid molecules are mirror images of one another, and they are non-superimposable. So that means these isomers are enantiomers. They are a chiral pair. These compounds here, dopamine and dihydroxyacetone, these are achiral compounds. You can see with dihydroxyacetone that there is a plane of symmetry within that molecule. So this is going to be achiral. Now, remember one of the reasons or one of the uh, deciding factors for chirality is that it has to have a chiral center. There is no chiral center in dihydroxyacetone. Because of that, it cannot be chiral. That's why it is achiral. Remember, a chiral center is an asymmetric center. It's an sp3 carbon that has four different groups attached to it. Dopamine is also achiral. And it is achiral because it does not have a chiral center or an asymmetric center. Remember, that means an sp3 carbon with four groups. So here around the ring, we have sp2 hybridized carbons here. So they are not asymmetric centers. Both of these carbons have two hydrogens. That's also not four groups. So this is going to be an achiral molecule.